Hey guys, here's our cork iPad case tutorial. You'll need a 10 by 11 and 8 by 10 pattern, cork squares, I use the 12 by 12 that comes in packs, felt, steam -a seam which you can find at Joanne. You'll need spray adhesive, I use Elmer's, and then craft sticks, which I use the larger ones of. You'll also need binder clips, which I use the large size. You'll need a craft knife or an X-Acto knife, whatever you call it. Sandpaper. Wood glue, I use Elmer's. And also some cotton. You'll need an iron and an ironing board. First, place your larger pattern down onto a cork square and cut around it using your craft knife. You'll want to get it as perfect and close to the edges as possible, and you can always do some touch-ups once you get the larger pieces off. And again, this is your 10 by 11 piece of pattern, and I use a little bit of a rounded edge on the top. And make sure you cut one square at a time and do both of them. Don't forget you have to make two of them. Next, use your smaller pattern to cut out a square from the felt, and you're going to want to cut both of these as well. Next, you'll cut out two smaller squares from your cotton, which I used an old t-shirt of my husband's, and that'll save you a little bit of money. Finally, cut out two of the squares from your steam -a seam and remember that you need to cut two of everything. Next, you peel off one side of your steam -a seam and it comes off really easily. Then you take one of your cotton squares and spread it out, stretch it however you need to so that your piece of steam -a seam is completely covered. You don't want any of that showing because when you put your iron on it, if it's showing, then you'll end up with a big sticky mess. So just stretch it out, then you can flip it over and you can iron it on either side. And you just want to make sure you use a steam setting on this and iron it down as best as you can and make sure it's not bunching up anywhere and you're not making a big sticky mess. When you're done ironing it down, then you peel off the other piece of wax that you have onto your steam -a steam and you have that too. There you go. So you'll take one of your pieces of cork and lay your cotton piece down so that there's about an inch around on all sides of it. It'll probably be a little bit less. And then just iron that down onto your cork piece. This will add just a little protective barrier and help stiffen it up just a little more. Once you've ironed on both sides, you need to lay them out on a board and use spray adhesive onto the felt and liberally apply that so it's covered well. And then you will put the felt over where you've ironed on your cork piece too so that it covers it pretty much completely, especially on the rounded end, you want that to look the best because that's what can be seen when you're done. Next, you're gonna take your wood glue and put it on three sides of your cork just so it doesn't go on the rounded edge and not onto the cloth. Then you'll take your piece without any glue on it and flip it over so it is flush and flat against the other piece. Now you want to work quickly but efficiently and put one wood craft stick on either side and then clip those together with a binder clip and you want to do that all the way around. By putting the craft sticks and then the binder clip, it makes it so you don't leave any prints and impressions on your cork while you're doing this. And you're going to want to make it so that it's as tight as possible when it's drying. After you've let this dry for about an hour, go ahead and take off all the binder clips and craft sticks. If you hear any cracking from the glue, that's just fine. It's just stretching out a little bit, but keep taking all of those off. Next, stencil all the edges to get off any excess glue and smooth everything out. And then also on the top and bottom sides to leave a nice smooth finish to stencil or paint on. So if you wanted to stencil, you could, but here's my final project. You can see I did some roses. And when I open it up on the top there, you can see the felt. And that's what your iPad will actually touch. But it looks really cool and it's homemade and it was pretty cheap.
Thanks for watching, guys, and check back later this week for my next tutorial. Bye!